I'm back. And with me, I bring a few more of my assignments. I'm not sure how much time I have, so I'll jump right into it. First up, code name Dahlia. Dahlia is, well, Dahlia's a doll. <laughs> a ventriloquist doll, to be exact. Despite her simple looks, she's quite dangerous. Probably not in the way that most of you would expect, though. She can't move on her own. Uh, well, she can speak, but that's it. So she won't be running around your home in the middle of the night stabbing people. No, instead, Dahlia's... Dahlia has an incredibly strong power of influence. One look in her eyes, and she'll have complete control of you. It's a bit ironic, really, a ventriloquist doll making humans her puppets. In my briefing, I was told that Dahlia is essentially the definition of sadistic. She enjoys making her victims inflict as much pain as possible before eventually disposing of them. I'm not sure if demons are real, but if they are, I'm sure that's what's trapped in that doll. Dahlia is believed to be staying with a family of four. She'd been taken there by a scientist who had fallen under her control. She'd only been gone about a week, but there's no telling what she could have gotten up to in that time. The scientist who'd taken her had returned to her workplace a day later and attempted to murder her co-workers, but was quickly taken care of. I made my way to the family's home, hoping to be surprised by what I saw. Let's just say I got my wish, but not in the way I'd hoped. I knocked on the front door, and after a few minutes of no response, I turned the handle to find the door was unlocked. I wish I hadn't. The moment I stepped into the home, I was hit with a putrid smell. One that I know means death. The walls were coated in blood. Some of it was dried, some was fresh, and still slowly dripping down. I found the family together in the living room. The mother and two children were sitting in a small triangle. They were already dead and rotting. Their stomachs had been cut open with their entrails hanging out. They had been posed in a way to make it look as if they were eating their own organs. In the center of that triangle was the father hanging from the ceiling. He had scratches and cuts all across him, but that was nothing compared to what had happened to his family. Just before I was about to spill my lunch all over the floor, I had heard a voice from the opposite corner of the room. You're just in time. What do you think of my art? It's a little sloppy, but I'm sure it'll get better in time. Dahlia? I questioned. Aww. Have you come to get me already? I was having such a fun time. I'm done here anyway. I guess you can take me back for now. I'll be out again soon. I made my way over to the voice, making sure to keep my head down. I had no intention of ending up like that family. When I got close, I closed my eyes. I managed to pick her up and flip her over. And make my way back to my vehicle. Let me sit up front. I like to have conversations during my car rides. Plus, you can't get much action from women in this line of work, so it'll be fun for both of us. Dahlia said mockingly. As much as I wanted to chuck her in the back seat and throw a blanket or something over her, I also didn't want her to be out of my line of sight, so I granted her wish. I carefully sat her up front, turning her head towards the window. I'd be lying if I said part of me wasn't curious about her. I wanted to know more about what makes a monster a monster. You should just take me home with you. Tell your boss I wasn't here. I'm sure we could have lots of fun together. Yeah, I'm... Sure, you would make a great kindling for a fire, I responded. <laughs> You're funny. I like you. I was thinking I'd have someone kill you eventually, but maybe I'll keep you. Oh. You don't just kill everyone? Of course not. I like to let the really bad ones live. It's more fun that way. What do you mean by that? Are you saying I'm a bad person? That made me a bit angry. I almost turned to look at Dahlia, but I thought better of it. Was she just trying to provoke me? You aren't quite on my level yet, but I see potential in you. You didn't even scream when you saw my work. Maybe you even enjoyed seeing it. You may think we're different, but we really aren't. She was partly right. I hadn't reacted when I saw the bodies. I had felt a little sick. But if I had seen that a few months ago, I, I would have probably passed out. Whether I like it or not, I'm definitely changing. I don't think it's for the good. What are you? I finally asked after a few minutes of silence. Look into my eyes and I'll tell you. Nice try. I may be stupid, but I'm not that stupid. I responded, almost bursting out into laughter. What are you afraid of? Do you think you would see yourself if you looked into my eyes? That's enough. One more word, I'm googling where the nearest wood chipper is. Those were the last words I spoke in our little road trip together. I dropped off Dahlia and informed them of the mess at the house. 
They said that they would send someone to clean it up. I was hoping they'd give me a break after what I'd seen, but... But I wouldn't be so lucky. As soon as I turned in Dahlia, they told me they already had a new assignment ready for me. That would be codename... Jack. Grandiose name, I know. This is probably the oddest assignment I'd received yet. Jack was, from what I could tell, entirely human. I had no clue why they had tasked me with finding a human. Perhaps he was a runaway scientist, or someone who knew too much, but he certainly wasn't what I had gotten used to hunting. I was told that Jack was incredibly dangerous, though, and that I shouldn't take any risks trying to capture him alive. In other words, they wanted him dead. This only made me more curious as to what secrets that Jack must have held. Jack was constantly on the move, so it wasn't easy to find him, but my training had paid off, and I was eventually able to track him down. I watched him for a few. He didn't seem dangerous to me. Suspicious and cautious, yes, but not dangerous. One night he stepped out of his hotel room to go get food, so I decided to let myself in. Jack and I needed to have a talk. Jack didn't seem too surprised when he returned to his room to find me sitting on the couch. He simply held out his arms. So, they did send someone for me after all. Well, go ahead, do what you have to do, I won't fight it. Sit down, Jack. I just want to talk. Jack raised an eyebrow at this. Curious one, huh? You know what they say about curiosity, right? I rolled my eyes and once again motioned for Jack to sit down. Who are you, Jack? Why did they send me after you? You don't know? I'm you. At least I used to be. They tell us where to go, who to kill, who to bring back alive, and we do it. No questions asked. Couldn't handle it anymore, though, so here I am. And here you are, Jack explained. This took me back for a second. I had known he had had some connection to my agency, but I had never considered that he had been in the same position as me. So there really was no way out. Other than death, that is. I walked across the room, pulled out my gun, and killed Jack. I had the answers I'd come for. Perhaps Dahlia was right. We aren't so different, after all. I returned with Jack's body. I wasn't asked to give my usual debriefing instead. I was just given a simple nod and told to go home and wait for my next assignment. I wonder... If this was another test. If it had been, I'm sure I'd pass with flying colors. I understand if you all think less of me for the choices I made, but if it wasn't me, it would have been someone else. This is the life that I'd chosen, or perhaps the life that was chosen for me. Regardless, I can't back down now. I'm simply one discardable person in the whole scheme of things. Don't mistake my actions for blind loyalty, though. I know the people I work for aren't good people. I simply know my my place in the world, and the minute I stop being useful, I'll end up like Jack. How does the saying go? Better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you all thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, or watching tonight's story if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, that means you're probably on the podcast that's available on iTunes, on the Google Play Store, and is now actually available on Spotify and doesn't use as much data. So, hey, that's a thing. If you guys aren't listening on YouTube or Spotify, then I have no idea how else you could have found me. Unless you found one of those books on Amazon. You know, the Creepypasta Collection, Volume 1, Volume 2. Those are things, too. Oh, well. I don't know how you would have heard me there, seeing as this was recorded, like, two years after those came out. Uh. Well, anyway. Thanks for listening, folks. And sweet dreams.